हेलो एंड नमस्ते वेलकम टू द केमिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट एट आई आई एस सी एंड आई एल बी टेकिंग यू ऑन अ शॉर्ट टूर टू द थेरेप्यूटिक इंजीनियरिंग लैब सो वी अपीयर आउट फ्रॉम अ बिगर कम्युनिटी ऑफ कंप्यूटेशनल इंजीनियर्स एंड आई एम श्योर यू विल ऑल हैव सीन अस ऑलमोस्ट एवरीवेयर बी इट साइंस मेडिसिन मटीरियल्स यू जस्ट नेम इट सो लेट्स क्विकली गेट एन आइडिया ऑफ हाउ पावरफुल मॉडलिंग एंड सिमुलेशन इज from forecasting weather so that it could not spoil your plans for the day to sending rockets and landing rovers to mars anything that you can imagine and you want to visualize as possible with modeling and simulation so in a nutshell we can predict future events monitor present events and analyze past events just like dealing with all these complicated systems human body is also a complex network of cells proteins tissues organs and much more so we work on your immune system to let you win the battle for your health and the most interesting part here is that no one else can do what we do yes chemical engineers now let me tell you how we stand out you see a chemist can accurately measure the yield or temperature rise during a chemical reaction a physicist from a simple experiment can tell you how much force it is needed to leverage a rock but for a biologist it is not that simple it is an extremely difficult task to perform detailed calculations in biological systems but the question is what makes calculation in biology so complex so let's take an example an insect bites on your skin and you get a tiny bump this bump is an important signal that your body's immune cells which are the major safeguards are in action this system is actually a vast network of cells tissues organs coordinating with each other to fight the infection our bodies are teeming up with billions and billions of immune cells and as soon as any foreign substance enters these security personnel kick in so our body is in a constant conversation going on between cells and within each cell there are multiple signals and numerous biochemical reactions going on in parallel so now you can imagine that it is almost impossible for any human brain to keep track of all these cellular dynamics and analyze them but hey don't worry because now we have computers so we are here to the rescue we are computational biologists or call us mathematical biologists we translate the simp- the complex cellular dynamics into simple mathematical models and algorithms to analyze and predict the outcomes so why we because we as chemical engineers with a sound knowledge of mathematics and a nice hold and understanding of transport processes reaction kinetics at a very molecular level we can study and analyze the biological systems like no other so chemical engineering provides us the perfect toolkit to work upon such systems so this is our team with our beloved professor narendra and we have ananthu soumya shreyas amir akshay me and harshbir on board now this is me your tour guide ending with some happy memories thank you welcome to nanobio photonics lab our lab focuses on interdisciplinary research where we use uh, engineering tools to address biological problems uh, this is our group uh, uh, we have pretty diverse group where half of the people are from engineering background and half of the people are from biology background and these are some things that we are doing in our lab so we do single molecule imaging uh, we use uh, different microscopy techniques like uh, we use fluorescence microscopy or bright field microscopy to look at single molecules of proteins or single molecules of dna or single uh, bacteria to address like some problems that i'll be discussing soon uh, we also work on microfluidics where we 
have like uh, in chemical engineering we have multiple unit operations which are required to carry out certain process so we try to squeeze that entire reactor into onto a small chip that's why it is called lab on a chip and we try to carry out those reactions in this at this small scale and uh, we also work on uh, bacterial heterogeneity so within certain population of bacteria you will have some bacteria that are behaving differently while uh, compared to the general population of the bacteria uh, we also work on the viruses we study the life cycle of the virus its spread and the immune response the host immune response to the viruses so priyanka from our lab is working on droplet microfluidics to quantify single cell uh, nucleic acid and we create droplets at this point so here in this video you see this is oil coming from this channel and then there is aqueous channel here and this is how the droplet is formed and at the end you check whether whatever rna or dna that you are looking for whether it is present in that cell or not so satyagosh from our lab is working on understanding the self assembly of protein so there are certain proteins like pore forming toxins where these proteins bind to the uh, membrane of the cell then they undergo some changes on the membrane of the cell and then they oligomerize and they form a pore and once the pore is formed the in internal contents of the cells are released into the background in, into the uh, outside of the cell and that's the that's how the cell dies so what he does is he attaches a dye to each molecule of the protein and he visualizes the movement of that protein on the membrane of the uh, on the uh, lipid bilayer membrane and uh, using some uh, chemical engineering techniques like diffusion coefficient and all he finds out the mechanism by which it is binding and it is forming the pore on the lipid my lipid membrane thank you you can contact us at these this email id is hello everyone my name is ayushi and i am going to give an overview of our lab laboratory for microfluidic bioengineering headed by dr bhushan tole so let's start by drawing a comparison between the classical chemical engineering problem and the modern one in classical problem the complex and crude input stream is processed in a giant refinery with the help of various unit operations to develop valuable products in modern chemical engineering problem the complex and crude input stream which is here the sputum sample of a tb infected patient into a lab based equipment here it is gene export and the value addition comes from being able to tell the result of test but all these sophisticated equipments and instruments are currently restricted to high tech laboratories making them inaccessible by a wide strata of society this is where the main theme of our lab comes to develop point of care diagnostic devices that can generate sensitive and specific results produce robust output and at the same time are affordable and accessible by all working on this line our senior phd student navjot has developed a device called flip nat acronym for fluorescent isothermal paper and plastic nucleic acid amplification test this is the device that she has developed it is clearly seen that the fluorescent in intensity increases on increasing the concentration of Uh, the bacterial load present in sample satish is also our senior phd student and he is working on automatic paper machines for sensitive point of care immunoassays immunoassays are used for protein detection and they are based on antibody antigen binding he has also developed a model to understand reaction kinetics in lateral flow assays Apart from this Satish has also developed a device for sequential delivery of different reagents This is a short video to demonstrate sequential delivery of three different dyes red yellow and green to detection zone
where the detection happens. I am working on developing barrier-free mu pads, which stands for microfluidic paper analytical devices for multiplex detection. We do not forget to take regular breaks from our research and hang out together. So life in IIC is not that boring as you may suppose. With all this, I wish you all the best for your journey in IIC and department. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Anjali. I'm a third year PhD student and I'm representing on behalf of Interfacial and Colloidal Phenomena Lab. Firstly, welcome to you all. You're all set for a new journey which is uh, going to remote a lot of things in you. Let me take you to our lab virtually for now. So I'll start with introducing our supervisor. This lab is led by Professor Sanjeev Kumar Gupta. He has done his master's and PhD from the same department, ISC Chemical Engineering, and he was the best thesis of his time. He is currently the chairperson of the department. Let us meet the lab members now. So the senior most member is Danish. He is the postdoctoral fellow. Then it comes to Diksha. Diksha is in her fourth year. This is me, Anjali, and this is Tulsi. We are in our third year. This is Ashish and Suyash. They are in their second year of PhD. And Arun and Sashwat are in their second year of PhD. Hari is the post uh, project assistant of our lab, he has completed so his like read of this, this year. Out. The group so, strives uh, to contribute insights into difficult to address, but current problems. So we take pride in often being the first one to put up a mechanistic picture. So basically we are a modeling lab. We try to understand fundamental challenges in the field, investigate those and develop models to capture the behavior. This model helps us to control the process. It helps us to understand the physics which is hidden and also to manipulate the process. I'm trying to understand the mechanism of how a drop would break in a high shear field. The mixer shown on the left side is a high shear mixer where the emulsions are made and these are operated on some prescribed conditions. So any change in the upstream can make us uh, you know, redesign the entire process. The drop size distribution is a key feature because it is going to affect the properties of the product. Like to so start with energy storage. So Diksha is working uh, on supercapacitors. So capacitors, uh, as we have studied in high school, are basically dielectric, which is separated by uh, two plates, and uh, is the charge is stored in the in the system. And the capacitance is given by this formula. So supercapacitors uh, in we have uh, porous electrodes rather than these plates and each pore starts acting as a supercapacitor. Since the dimension of these pores are uh, reduced by such a great amount, so the D becomes so small and the capacitance become very high. Supercapacitors are energy storage devices that can store more charge than dielectric capacitors and can deliver them at quicker rates compared to the batteries. So the battery is the next research area for us. Batteries play a very important role in integration of renewable and non-renewable sources of energy. They act as a buffer between uh, the uh, supply, varying supply and demand over the time. So there have been conventional uh, options like lithium batteries, uh, lithium ion batteries or lead ion batteries or even vanadium batteries. Vanadium batteries are very expensive. Are expensive. So however, class of flow batteries that are significantly cheaper is the soluble lead redox flow battery. And this is a membraneless system which makes our life simpler. This is the system of our study, our focus. One of the main obstacles with these batteries in their wide acceptance is uh, its cycle life. So our group is pursuing new battery designs that can harness the natural convection. Hello everyone and welcome to the laboratory of nanoparticle engineering. The research theme of our group is to develop process engineering toolkit comprising of cost-effective and eco-friendly processes using nanostructures as building blocks, enabling advancements in the future of sensing, energy conversion and nanoelectronic devices. The method for preparing these cost-effective and eco-friendly nanostructures has been developed by our group. 
and makes use of the desktop inkjet printers enabling the economical production of nano structured metallic thin films of elements like silver gold and platinum of size less than 100 nanometer and film thickness less than 1 micron As a result of the inadequate knowledge and training of the farmers about the pesticide usage, doses and frequency of application, pesticide residues with concentration above the permitted levels often land up on our tables and hence real time detection of pesticides is desirable. Surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy is an emerging technique for the chemical analysis of food. Nikita works on the application of paper-based silver nanostructures and a portable Raman spectrometer to demonstrate the potential for on-site detection. Here in the use of paper-based flexible surf swab to detect pesticide from the surface of apple is being What if we could use a piece of paper as a swab on the skin of the vegetable to check for pesticides? Proton exchange membrane fuel cell also known as PEMFC is a promising and energy efficient technology for use in vehicles that convert chemical energy associated with hydrogen and oxygen molecules to electrical energy. Kantesh and others try to fabricate a simpler and cost effective additive fabrication process to manufacture a carbon free nano structured electrode with low platinum loading which can be achieved by a self terminating platinum deposition. The image shows an electrocatalyst prepared from silver nanowires with platinum deposition of about a few atomic layers achieved by self termination process. Abhishek in our group works in the area of gas sensing. There are liquid hydrogen carrying pipelines at Isro Mahindra Giri stretching several meters. Hydrogen being highly inflammable and the lightest element is always prone to leakages. Such leakages are more probable close to pipe joints. However, current hydrogen detection technologies cannot exact exactly home in on the location of leakage. Hence, it is desired to have flexible hydrogen leak detection tapes that can be wrapped around such pipe joints. Detectors consisting of hydrogen sensitive nanostructures are expected to have fast responses to such leakages. This project deals with the fabrication of such flexible leak detectors. recent advances in computer technology so we have that uh, so resource available so we can uh, go for computer simulations when we want to study any a uh, material uh, and its properties so in this slide i'll explain uh, the need of the simulations computer simulations or you know in what are the situations we prefer simulations to experiments so basically whenever we want to study any uh, material we go for experiments but in some cases where uh, uh, we have difficulty in performing the experiment or uh, if the experiment needs lots, lots of resources like you know if it is very expensive or very time consuming experiment or in some experiments you will have lots of uh, parameters to control uh, then you don't know like you know uh, the effect of each parameter on the outcome of the experiment so basically we have uh, monte carlo simulations and molecular dynamic simulations uh, so monte carlo simulations it's a, a stochastic method uh, in any simulation you you compute property by uh, by computing the same property again and again uh, by evolving the system uh, with respect to some constraints like volume temperature pressure so by maintaining same constraint you uh, evolve the system At a, at a micro level, at atomic level, and you compute the property again and again, and you do the averaging. So here in Monte Carlo, so to evolve the system, we uh, use random numbers. Uh, whereas in molecular dynamics, which is in determinist step, determinist method, where we solve Newton's laws of motion for evolution of the system. So uh, and in Monte Carlo uh, technique, we uh, we call it as ensemble averaging, and in molecular dynamics, we call it as time averaging. and there is something called a hergodic hypothesis which says that both the outcomes from both the methods uh, whether it is ensemble average or the time average should be equivalent so the so so depends on the properties you, are, you want to probe on a uh, material you go with monte carlo or molecular dynamics so if you want to go study only the equilibrium properties uh, where dynamics of the time constraint is absent you can uh, go with monte carlo simulations 
and uh, if you want to study the transport properties uh, then you can go with uh, molecular dynamics so in some cases if you have uh, large energy energy barriers uh, so in, in such cases uh, you can go with monte carlo simulations instead of molecular dynamics so these are the uh, this is a brief explanation on you know what we do in our lab so so in the next slide i'll introduce you know what are the different research areas we work on uh, the first one is gas hybrids crystal uh, polymorphism biomembranes nano catalysts and supercapacitors Hi everyone. I am Anand Govind Rajan. I am a recently joined assistant professor in the uh, department. Now my uh, research group is uh, entitled Computational Nanotechnology for Energy and Water, and it mainly uses computational tools to address a number of problems in which uh, chemical engineers can make an impact, and they can provide new new findings that are going to be useful in terms of energy storage and conversion. which is an important topic for the future as well as producing clean water to provide uh, drinking water to uh, large se uh, sets of the population now mainly we are going to focus on a class of materials called two dimensional materials and they are called two dimensional because they have a layered structure which is held together by weak van der waals forces so you might have heard of van der waals forces which are basically weaker compared to covalent bonds or metallic bonds and because of this weak nature you can get very thin layers of these materials and you can actually reach up to a very mono layer uh, while graphene is metallic in nature hexagonal boron nitride is an insulator so you have the entire spectrum of a semiconducting material insulating material and a metallic material at the nano scale as well now because these are 2d their thickness is often Uh, less than about 10 nanometers or so and that makes them very interesting now in terms of some of the applications you can think of using them in energy storage devices uh, due to their very interesting photoelectrochemical properties because of their uh, large surface areas and also large number of edges on those surfaces you can uh, use those kind of properties to make energy storage devices with high storage efficiencies you can think of uh, using their catalytic activity to make very high activity catalysts for reactions that have previously uh, taken a lot of energy so you can try to do them more efficiently and thirdly you can think of making membranes with them so these are like small holes which have been drilled with them this is a transmission electron microscopy image and these are pores that were created by experimentalists in reality and we can now start to model what will happen if you have a graphene or a boron nitride with nanopores and you try to pass water and ions through it how much water will go through how many ions will go through and can we really separate water from the ions uh, the research areas in our research group would be broadly into three parts the first would be modeling the synthesis of realistic 2d materials uh, which means different shapes sizes and uh, different crystallographic orientations of the material we want to understand 2d materials for energy conversion and storage uh, for example this is a schematic of an electrochemical reactor to produce ammonia rather than using the haber bosch process we might use electrochemical uh, methods and the third thrust is going to be understanding uh, two dimensional nano materials for water desalination applications so how does water interact with the surface in terms of the contact angle can we predict the selectivity and the uh, of different 2d materials as a function of the sizes of the nanopores in that material those are the kinds of questions we are looking to tackle hello everyone myself avjit kulthrest i am doing phd in isc and i work with kg appa so today i am going to give you a brief overview of what we do in our lab uh, that is soft interface laboratory and that is in kg iapa group so let me uh, let me start my let me start giving you a, whole, uh, a brief overview of the work that we are doing in our lab so our lab mainly do molecular dynamics simulations that's the main research area of our lab and what are the advantages of it there are the advantages like this have, this gives you a molecular level understanding of the process and it uh helps you to engineer the system at the molecular level it means like you can engineer a new system on your own at the molecular level and it's kind of help you in 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 the prediction in the in silico prediction of the process 
and why chemical engineers are needed here like why chemical engineers are doing this so the kind of skills that is needed uh, for to do this are like we either one should have a knowledge of statistical thermodynamics transport process physics chemistry and we have all this information it means we are all set to do this so i'll i'll just read out one quote say, said by francis crick almost all aspects of life are engineered at the molecular level and without understand without understanding molecule molecules we can only have a very sketchy understanding of life itself so now you be now you can imagine how important it is it to to have this molecular level understanding of the processes so when i say molecular level uh, level so it means some length scale and the time scale are associated with it so the whole generally whole process uh, we can divide into a different uh, we can look at at a different length scale so when we look at a normal length scale that we can that we can see through our eyes known as like continuum level where the length scale is of like 1000 nanometer and above and when we go down then there comes a meso scale level which is maybe from 10 which is 10 to 100 nanometer of length approximately and when we come even further down to it that's where the molecular level uh, comes and there there we do our molecular molecular dynamics simulation where we can look at the pictures at the molecular level now there are some alumni from our lab some phd students some msc and me we have written a very few of few of them here but we have several of them like a more than this like a, this is just a small list of it and some happy moment we share actually we often used to go out these are the pictures we we have uh, we have gone out for dinner uh, for lunch and this is the time when uh, this is the time one time when we were in news and here he is presenting his work uh, and this is from a conference we uh, attended and thank you so much i hope it this was useful for you uh, my name is tabish i'm a phd scholar in uh, chemical engineering department and i'm working under professor prabhu or not uh, so uh, here is the photograph of our principal invigilator and here are the names of the students so i'll get started right away we are a complex fluid and soft solid lab so by complex fluid i mean a uh, mixture that shows coexistence between uh, various uh, phases for example a uh, solid liquid coexistence is a is a suspension uh, liquid liquid coexistence is a emulsion and uh, say a solid uh, gas coexistence are grains or granular material or sand so uh, there are a lot of these uh, complex uh, fluids that we see in our uh, daily life for example milk is a Uh, oil in water emulsion or butter is a, a water in oil emulsion uh, right apart from uh, these things uh, these uh, complex fluids are also a part of our uh, biological system for example rbcs inside our blood blood vessels are uh, you know this is a sort of a suspension but uh, a suspension in which the so solid particles are soft as well they can change their shape as well for example the size of our uh, uh, red blood cells is around uh, 8 microns and some capillaries are as small as 4 microns so these uh, rbcs have to squeeze through the capillary they have to change the shape so uh, uh, we are interested in uh, understanding how the real properties of this complex fluids uh, can be measured and uh, how does the uh, let's say the shape of these particles or the number density of these particles uh, affect the real physical properties so uh, the first uh, subject uh, or one of the first uh, complex materials that we study are granular materials so the question is what kind of materials are they for example if you take a sand in a, in a fist and uh, we, we generally know that i mean the sand flows down right but as soon as it goes down it forms a heap at the bottom so it acts as a fluid and then once it forms a heap it acts as a solid as well because the heap is static right even in industry is one does see it so the main question that arises what kind uh, sorry what we want to answer is what kind of materials are uh, what kind of materials is sand uh, so there are i mean there are experiments that are uh, that have been conducted a long time ago uh, starting from long time ago where uh, this is a column and there are there is sand in it shown by gray and then there are these black lines of secondary material 
and there's a valve at the bottom which is closed so i mean after uh, some time the valve is open and the sand flows down so uh, uh, we see here that i mean there is some sort of uh, flow profile uh, attached to these granular material and uh, using this uh, kind of configuration one can uh, calculate or one can observe how these granular material flowed Hello, my name is Ashwin Nair and I'll be giving you a brief introduction to the V. Kumaran lab. Our lab is headed by Professor V. Kumaran, who obtained his B.Tech from IIT Madras in 1987 and his PhD from Cornell University in 1992. He is a fellow of many institutions, including the Indian Academy of Science and the American Physical Society, and has won various awards like the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize, the Swarna Jayanti Fellowship, and the Infosys Prize, to name a few. The lab currently consists of three fourth-year PhD students, namely me, Orka Prava and Banjan, and two third-year PhD students, Mehul and Abhimanyu. We also have a postdoctoral student by the name of Naga Samrat. Danny is an inspired faculty who works with Professor V. Kumaran. Venkateya is a project assistant who provides day-to-day -day support with the experimental and computational facilities. Our lab currently works on five broad areas, flow-pass flexible surfaces, turbine gas particle suspensions, liquid crystalline phases, statistical mechanics of granular flows, and microfluidics. I'll be giving you a brief description of some of these areas in the upcoming slides. Let's start with flow past flexible surfaces. When a fluid flows past a flexible solid, the solid deforms in response to the stresses applied by the fluid. As a result, the stability of the flow is affected, which may result in the shifting of the Reynolds number at which transition to turbulence takes place. The range of system parameters for which transition takes place can be obtained theoretically by performing a linear stability analysis on the Navier-Stokes equations. These theoretical results can then be validated by performing a particle image velocimetry on a physical system. Moving on to particle laden flows, these are multi-phase flows consisting of a dispersed particle phase in a continuous carrier phase. This has applications in studying pollution dispersion in the atmosphere fluidization and combustion processes, and so forth. These systems are generally run at high Reynolds numbers and therefore tend to be turbulent. The continuous phase is simulated by applying CFD on Navier-Stokes equations, while dispersed phase is simulated through particle dynamics algorithms. The ultimate goal is to understand the physics of these kinds of flows and to relate the Reynolds number and particle fraction with the stability of the system with respect to settling. 